Alright guys, what's up? And and quoting a former great YouTuber that I used to follow, I used to love watching his content. Good evening, ladies and genitals. And that is from the following Yodi Slayer. Look him up, he's worth it. Anyway, welcome to the pilot review show tonight. We've got a fairly good show tonight. I don't know how long it's going to go, but then again, I'm tired and I'm congested, so I don't care. And we are joined tonight by our resident bug hunter, Darkblade. Giggity. Our resident teacher who loses points for every school in Hogwarts except Slytherin, <laughs> Teacher Kirby. <laughs> giggity, giggity, you. And our resident RPer who is still trying to RP his way out of that brown paper bag, Artie. Hey guys. <laughs> so, let's get on with Of course, Scott, you know, God's not always going to be here. That's why I'm leading the show tonight. He's probably off with his family somewhere, and more power to him, to be perfectly honest. So, let's start off this week with our patch notes. Now, I really haven't gotten to pour over our PC patch notes. We do have to kind of get used to that now on the pilot review show that there's going to be two different dates for patch notes for PC and console now. So these happen to be the PC notes and looking over them I'm seeing that they finally have done a few things that probably needed to be going on from the beginning. For me drain infection is now stacking with each player attacking a target that's actually a good thing if you've got multiple drain builds proccing drain infection. Um, Tyken's Rift is now allowing secondary effects to trigger on all targets damaged. You know, just a few minor things that probably have needed to be in there for a while. They're, they're really not game-breaking or game-enhancing to the nth degree, but they were probably meant to be there, and now... Uh, we actually have them in there. G some good fixes I'm seeing in here. Chris, that's your re our resident bug hunter. Anything that you might have seen in the bug hunter forums that's gotten fixed this week? Uh, nothing I can think of off the top of my head. I do see one, though, that uh, catches my attention. Tetrion Cascade will now apply the player's damage modifiers to all hits. So if you're somebody that preferred to use that ability in your rotation at some point, then that's a nice little potential boost for you there. Indeed. Indeed. I kind of looked over that one. I mean, you, you typically don't think of Tetrion Cascade. You know, you have it as a nice little one-shot in a lot of runs. That might actually be a nice boost. just depends on when you activate it. Kirby, you see anything? Uh, yeah, actually, Artie and I were discussing a couple things. So, first of all, they resolved the occasional DirectX 11 startup crashes. Yay! Because, you know, that kind of sucked. You couldn't even get in the game. Um, <laughs> so, that's kind of game-breaking. And then uh, Ragnarok, they resolved an issue where defeating a group too early would make it impossible to complete. And then the big one for me that I'm hoping leads to another fix had to do with, where is it? I believe it's under System. systems. Yeah. Was the entropic contagion slash cascade was damaging allied PCs and they fixed that. This reminds me of the active immunity mines where they would infect your allies. My husband is laughing maniacally in in the other part of the room because he used to irritate me to no end with these. They were from the uh, Undine lockbox. You would lay them out and they would have a, uh, a infection that would slow you down and, and uh, you know give you some damage. Well, they would affect your allies instead of the enemies. And this looks like it was something very similar, so I'm hoping, since they fixed this, that the active immunity mines will come, will be soon to follow. Crossing All my right. fingers. Artie, I'm noticing some character and UI deals. Now, 
as an RPer, I would assume, especially with the character models, some things do have to be a certain way for RP. Out of the four and a half lines they've got here, anything that stood out in character or in any of the other patch notes that really speak to you? We're never going to get away from having something clipped to a Saurian patch. That's the major thing. <laughs> um, but uh, there wasn't really much uh, going around that was too uh, sticking out. Uh, I'm I'm glad that they fixed quite a few uh, different uh, character stuff, like the Intel glasses with the Saurian head and uh, the Herald helmet. But um, that's basically it. Um, there was uh, some stuff with the Admiral Admiralty stuff that I noticed with the. Uh, the Admiralty campaign XP to incorrectly pull from the accommodation XP pool. That was, eh, it was, it was good, but still, you know, something that was going to be fixed either way. So that was just something I noticed. Okay. Okay. Well, you know, the patch notes are up. You can find them on the ARC server. You can find them in our show notes. So, you know, you'll be able to see them. It's, it's nice to have them there. Let's keep it moving. We're first going to discuss the weekend for PC. Now, not a lot is happening for PC this weekend, except for our junior officer weekend. So you're getting mm -hmm. your 50% increase in accommodation XP from duty officer assignments, and they've got that little... I get irritated with it. I know some people like to do it for the officers, but that little BS thing on you know, Starfleet Academy where you run around and you're scanning things and half the time you can't get there because someone's already scanned it and either you're getting what you need out of it or you're fighting a holographic Klingon I mean I haven't done it because it just when I have done it it's been a long grind because everybody floods Starfleet Academy so it lags out the maps or you end up spending all, you know, like maybe all of maybe two hours if you're lucky. Do it a couple of times, get all the officers you need, and then you get bored. Um, so I mainly like this weekend personally for the boosted duty officer assignments. Helps with the level up grind for some of the specialization points that you might need. And considering that the exocomp is your highest quality reward, a lot of people have already gotten that. So for you new players, yes. it's definitely worth it. For us old players and salted dogs, I guess we're just doing our normal grind this week. <laughs> well, so. it is important to note that a lot of people made a Agent of Yesterday tune, so those tunes would not have the Exocomp yet. So, and the Exocomp mission is different from the run around and scan the things mission, so, you know, and so it is important to note you have to go talk to Lieutenant Farah if you're fed. Um, Statas, if you're the the big Gorn down on the academy, if you're KDF, and uh, get the mission to go and claim that, and then go talk to the other guy, who it will help direct you to where it is. It's going to be some variation of Jarol. It'll have all those letters, it <laughs> just in different orders. Depending uh, you, on your faction, yeah. You have that this weekend, so you PC players have fun. For me and Chris, though, we've got three events this weekend. So screw you guys. <laughs> like, we can enjoy. Shots fired! And, and <laughs> we get to enjoy our bonus Dilithium weekend, along with a 20% Starship sale and a 15% key sale. So I can guarantee you, me and Chris might actually try... To maybe get a key and go for a Keldon over there. Um, I was able to ask though for us PC players. We don't have a definable date, but Cryptic does have a defined release date and release method for the Cardassian Dominion lockbox gear and starships for PC. But they are not giving that out. That was answered last night on Tribbles and Ecstasy. So. Great interview with Maria Rosso and Salami Inferno Stephen Rocosa. But okay. that is coming. But for you uh, console gamers, you know, I've had a lot of people talking about getting these tier 6 starships. 
you know the keys are not that expensive on the exchange but this is a great way to keep the keys relatively inexpensive on console right now I believe the last time I logged in was two days ago when I got home or about a day and a half ago and keys were only at about 250,000 EC so this should help keep that price low and then anybody that's at level 50 or above on console guess what you've got your dilithium so it makes it even more worthwhile to really grind those STFs and PVEQs so have fun with that it's really good um, the only thing that's hurting you on your starship sales is not all of the starships for PC are on console yet but there are quite a few that are on console right now that you can honestly enjoy including the starter ships from the Delta Rising Intel pack so you still have the Intel starships so it's up to you whether you want to buy them or not at least they're on sale mm-hmm and the, the Delta Rising starter pack is a good set to get a good pack to get if you're gonna get one it's uh, a lot of DPS potential there they'll perform well they have the ability to slot override subsystem safeties you know it's there it's a nice versatile pack personally waiting on the temporal ships to the 31st centuries to hit console it is myself and maybe try for McKeldin because reasons <laughs> oh you're always gonna try for that Keldon you already yeah, know yeah. that alright so enjoy those now we have a little brief tidbit and I want to hear from Artie mainly on this one because this would tie in a lot on what I would feel our peers would want to reference and they put out from Cryptic Star Trek Online temporal summary as far as the timeline of all the events and then where they pulled the ideas for their story arcs and missions from the physical timeline the so Artie I wanna know I know you've looked over this what do you think about the references and how well they put together this timeline versus what we've seen in game um I really like how they writ out the uh, the timeline and how uh, what episodes and what series uh, connected to those episodes and so on but um, I really like how it's real just easily set up. Um, most of it is just generally speaking, yeah, we know, yeah, Con resurfaced in 2285 with, and, you know, Wrath of Con, that sort of thing. But it makes everything a little bit simpler for everyone that just wants to know when certain things happen. Even things that weren't explained on screen, like uh, when the Enterprise E showed up and stuff like that. And even uh, filled in some blanks, like uh, the stuff that happened between uh, Romulus being destroyed and when the Kinemon Accords finally dissolved. Stuff like that. Um, what I do like to note is, uh, I don't know if it's just for flair on the uh, on on the picture, but there is two dotted lines just going straight to the bottom, from top to bottom, with the other uh, the Kelvin timeline and the uh, the Prime timeline. And I feel like there may be something else that could be added, otherwise it's just fluff, but it does intersect a few different uh, parts on both timelines. So there could be something, there could be something that may be added later on, but there's that. That's the thought I honestly was having, because we are moving into having it, you know, Kelvin timeline, since they've added that, we do have the alternate reality scheme, we are jumping through time, maybe this is their first hint is... You know, as we go on, we won't be just fighting for our timeline. We might be fighting for other timelines as well on a more active basis. We might actually be using something like what was seen in Parallels from TNG, where we're seeing how different timelines turned out actively as we jump from timeline to timeline to help, I guess, bolster their fate so they can actually survive. This is about the best way I, I can put it. Because certain timelines have certain fates already written in for starships and personnel and species as a whole. So maybe we are timeline jumping as we go through the game in future expansions. I like that thought. Thank you, Artie. No problem. I would also like to point out that they did not add in a Star Trek Into Darkness or in Star Trek Beyond. 
in the uh, Kelvin timeline. This is I, true. I would have the feeling that they would at least add in uh, Into Darkness, since we do run into uh, the android that we see for a moment in Into Darkness in a, a featured episode for the uh, for the future proof uh, campaign section. Well, so this is true. You, think it would add that in. you do have the vengeance as well. Yeah. But maybe not Star Trek Beyond, because there's no real assets that link the game to Star Trek Beyond as of this moment. So that might be something that's added in in the future. Give time. Um, which Scott walked in. Hey, Scott. Yeah, the boss has got to check in once in a while, right? Oh, whatever. <laughs> You don't pay me enough to let you walk in mid mid broadcast right now. What are you talking about? <laughs> I don't pay you anything. I know, that's why I said you don't pay me enough. Alright, so we've got that timeline up. You know, it's a nice, interesting thing to have up where if you're wanting to reference things, and it's merely just there as a reference. So take it for what you will, but I'm glad that they did put in the time to actually make that a physical image you can reference and show where they got their insight for all of their story arcs. It's kind of nice to know what they reference, so you can go back and look to see what parts of those episodes they really fine-tune the reference font. So, that's up in the show notes. Have fun with that. For our budget corner this week, I'm referencing a build that on PC I did a while back. I did it right before Agency yesterday, but it's going to be something you're going to see on console soon if I can get a chance to level up my tune a little bit faster. I've got the Free Sovereign build that I did a while back. So the Free Sovereign you get at level 40 running a phaser build. So it's, I guess, mostly build t built towards what an RPer could use. I don't have torpedoes on the build, but it's all phasers. And it's a budget build that was doing rather well on PC for just your, you know, your learning mechanics, your learning piloting. It did well. So I've got that link up, and it doesn't take that long to get. It takes about 10 to 12 days to save up that build. And you're able to do enough damage output to do any advanced run in the game. And you have plenty of survival to back it up and work with that build going forward. So you can always check that out. Chris. Yes, sir. The buggy corner seems a little digitized as if we're losing time on our cable signal. Why is that? What are you doing over there? Um, um, contacting aliens? Well, I knew that. Well, th there's nothing new here in that concept. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. Right. What have you been studying in the past uh, week with the bu with the, the bugs in the game that you've been reporting? Anything new? Well, a couple things that I've actually seen from console. I've not been doing as much with the PC version. But there's a camera cycle bug on Xbox One that I myself have run into whenever you zoom in. Even if you have your camera set the way you want, after you kill, say, a group of Klingons, then it will zoom your camera all the way out, and it gets really, really annoying. Another good one is people were reporting that the science vessels on Xbox One and PS4 couldn't use subsystem targeting, which is a major drag for that type of ship. Another guy on PC reporting that he's got untargetable rubble on the cold case mission. Which is Ooh. a very big deal since you need to clean that out of the way. That could potentially be game breaking. Mm. So if you are seeing these bugs, please, please report them. I can't emphasize this enough every week whenever I start talking about this stuff. And for the console players that are seeing a lot of bugs... At the moment, they don't yet have a Xbox One or PS4 forum for you to go to. So in the meantime, just use the main bug forum they've got. Just put some kind of little something, such as Xbox in the title, that way they know. And then just say, hey, I'm seeing, and then whatever it is you're seeing. Mm -hmm. But again, you know, you can always 
you can submit those to Chris, and if you don't feel it's getting through on the bug forms, he will submit those, even though it's going to be harder for him to replicate them right now, because we're all getting used to console, but you can submit those to him so he can get them to the proper people, because we do want to make for sure that console stays as smooth as possible. Yes. And then I know I contacted you early this week about the uh, not being able to access the account bank through the trade freighter in space. And that is, yeah, I remember that one now. Yeah. But as far as some of the bugs go, folks, it may take a little bit of time for them to get fixed. Please keep in mind, working with code as much as we wish it was isn't as simple as just flipping switches. Sometimes it can be two or three different things that need to be coded to fix one little issue. But they do fix stuff, even if they don't get to it right away, they are good about acknowledging things. So that's the big thing I would say there. Just be patient. Console's not been out even for a month yet, but it will get more polished and refined as things go on. But that's about all I have for this week, so I will pass it all back right. to you fine folks. Alright, well, just like I said, remember for PC, he's always open and ready to take any kind of bugs. Just remember, preferably a good write-up on the bug, and even more preferable, a video of it happening does help the situation. And currently, while there's no one for the bug hunters that's on console, like, hired, quote-unquote, for it, since he is playing it, he can check it out, and he definitely will forward those over. But t take advantage of the current Bug Hunter forums and get those up. Because from what we've seen, console has had a relatively smooth launch by comparison to PC. And we want to make sure that it stays smooth while PC continues to patch to make sure it has a smooth experience as well. So both platforms can really have not just a solid player base but you're not having to constantly deal with a whole bunch of problems so make for sure you're recording as much as you can before you send them teachers corner and I see yes. why now she keeps like wanting to jump <laughs> in and talk all the time and lower points for Gryffindor is because she can't keep everything in her overflow bag it just forces itself open that's what it is she's over there shoving stuff back into her purse so oh, let's, okay. let's go over this. So let's go over this. So if you, we just finished with the mirror event, so I'll use that as my frame of reference. So you've gone through, you've played your mirror event, you've got your shard, or at least you were told you got your shard. You go to put your shard in your project or your, your transporter thingy in your project, and it won't go in. And you look, and you see, oh, no, I've got an overflow bag. So like, okay, so you clean out spots in your inventory, you go to open your overflow bag, and the darn thing won't freaking open. Raise your hands if this has happened to you, or say something. Raise my hand. Ow. That's my ear. <laughs> you didn't need that ear, did you? I didn't need both my ears, no. Ow. Okay. <laughs> you okay, Scott? Do we need to send you to the nurse? No, I don't need to go okay. to the school nurse. I don't trust school nurses. Okay. <laughs> no one <Okay>. does. <laughs> anyway. But I will eat my so, pizza. Or brownie. <laughs> so I'm sure this has happened to everybody. It's happened to me many, many times. In fact, that exact situation happened to me during the mirror event. And I went, I don't want to have to log out and log back in. And it may or may not open. And I'm like, ah, crap. Well, one of the guys in the server goes, just type in, and I'm not going to say what it is because you'll have to watch the video. But it turns <laughs> out there is a command that you can type in your chat box that fixes the problem. You type in this command, and then, like magic, your overflow bag will open. So, and just... You, so you know what I went through? I actually had to go through, after I tested this, two weeks of trying to get an overflow bag to malfunction so that I could take this video to show you guys that it actually does work. 
okay so it does work you can type in a command and you'll have to watch the video to see what it is and it will open your overflow bag every time so there you go nice quality of life improvement there well we got the link in the show notes so you can always go and reference that now let us move to our RP corner maybe we can go back in time and unhear everything that we've heard this entire episode <laughs> or will So they fixed point in time. Well, tell me about it. I see in here we've got time travel in the RP community. Now, you know me when it comes to the foundry nowadays. What have we got going on now? Um, I have yet. I've seen some uh, video, uh, some foundry uh, missions pop up with uh, time travel being their big thing. Uh, I won't really mention any of them. You'll have to search for them yourselves. Yes, I'm tasking people that actually do something um but with the rp fleet themselves i have seen some fleets do a little bit in time travel for like a special event like for their anniversary or something they go back in time due to some incident fix something and come back uh sometimes q may just show up and go yeah you guys are going uh, a thousand years in the past to fix something i didn't want to fix so but there are some fleets that I think really do very well with what they do. They do the uh, they grab a bunch of wells, class ships, and stuff like that, and basically be the 29th century uh, version of the time police. Uh, they just go through and fix uh, like basically what we see in the temporal uh, in the temporal cold war. Someone goes in, fixes the problem, and leaves. But they actually go in with a bunch of their ships, stop say a massacre from happening and then leave again to go save someone else and it just never ends um from the fleets i've been a part of they don't really get too big into the temporal stuff because it does become a headache because you don't know when you did this or if you did something else in a, in a different temple event it rewrites what you did previously it gets confusing real easily a lot of people now that we have the star trek online timeline uh, for reference, it makes things so much simpler that we could just point out and go, we went there, and then we came back. That was it. And a lot of people, from what I've already heard uh, for how recent this was, people already love it, and they're really tempted to get into a, a temporal arc for their, uh, for their RP fleet, or at least try to do something. So Nice! It was definitely something that, you know, for RP, for Foundry, for those kind of things, it does add another element of storytelling, uh, especially if you can keep your story cohesive while still doing all this stuff, that you can jump through time, they'd be able to reference historical events. I like that. I really do. Um, like I said, it could be something that ends up happening more and more as we delve into the Agents of Yesterday expansion. And in the future, it could be not just different time frames, but it could be different alternate realities and time frames. But I'm glad that the RP community is experimenting with this, and they're actually doing rather well with it. I like that. So definitely yeah. we're going to have to search, and if you've got some, if you're not going to give them to the general audience, you do have to sneak a couple of them to us. Just say it. Oh, I, I know, I know. I, I'm actually uh, searching uh, as we speak just to see if I uh, have found something that I've played previously. I'm Nothing really stands out. Uh, I, I keep on going back to uh, Mirror Wars, since that's multiple different things, time travel, uh, the mirror universe, the mirror invasion event, a whole bunch of different stuff there, but I can't really uh, debut it twice, so. <laughs> no, that's true. That's true. Well, that brings us to the end of Pilot Review Show. Of course, as always, you know, we haven't, you know, we got to reference our website to see if we got any suggestions as far as builds to go over or if someone's looking for help with their build but don't hesitate to email pilot review web sh uh, website and submit builds submit your videos or your runs to see if we can help you improve 
or just hey this works for me maybe you could highlight it you know you might have a build that most people don't think works you want it out there and you would like the, sh the chance to show it off submit it we like these crazy weird things look what happened to Ernest Ramos for example Scott can tell you about that one so yeah that one was, I mean that's that's one of the many successes that's happened that's come on who's come on the show I mean there's other people that's done a lot of improvements since they came on you know this so much that we can do to help you out. I mean, even if we're just giving you a build because we can't we can get on for seeing how you're flying your ship, we can still take you out for different runs and SDFs to show you and see what you're doing, give you on-spot pointers if you can't record for it. So don't be don't be shy of getting in your builds at the very least, you know. Yeah. So until next week, this is the pilot review show. And we are gonna warp on out of here and start finding more bugs. <laughs> Good night, guys. <laughs> Take care. Good night. Peace. See ya.